Hello everyone, this is an introductory video to the new series on planet skills. What do you think is the most important innovation made by mankind? What is it that led to all the technological advancements that we see in recent times like the mobile phones, gaming consoles, speakers, tablets, internet servers and what not? Could we say that all of this has been possible due to the invention of transistors, the spark to ignite the semiconductor industry that has been booming? Transistors were first invented in Bell Lab in 1947. Since then, semiconductors have become the backbone of modern society. There are so many companies working in this field. I have listed only a few of them here, but there are many more. Cities densely populated by these industries got to be named after them. You must have heard of San Francisco Bay Area called the Silicon Valley and Bangalore in our own country called the Silicon City. So, Planet Skills is starting a new series on digital electronics to make your digital electronics basics stronger and to get a better understanding of digital circuits from an interview perspective. In this series, we shall cover FAQs and tricky concepts from the following topics. Multiplexer, decoder, encoder, flip-flops, frequency dividers and counters, sequence detector, finite state machine and a few Verilog related interview questions. We shall also be seeing Verilog coding for all the circuits mentioned above. For this introductory video, let us just see in general how a digital circuit is designed. Digital circuits consist primarily of transistors. As a matter of fact, the CPU is just a vast sea of transistors. Intuitively, you can view it as transistors organized to form logic gates and logic gates connected to form modules within your CPU. We will see an overview of steps involved in designing a processor. Here, I have taken the example of MIPS processor whose variants are present in Tesla Model S cars for lane detection, in Sony PlayStation and in many more products. First step in designing any digital system is to create the block diagram of its architecture. You can see the processor architecture of the basic MIPS processor to give you an idea. The major components of any processor are the program counter, the register file, the ALU, the control unit and there are many more components. Once the architecture is known, there has to be a language to clearly and concisely capture the digital design and this is done by using hardware descriptive languages or the HDLs like Verilog, System Verilog and VHDL. Let us see more about HDLs and try to understand the question that arises since there are so many options for HDLs, which HDL to start our design process with. VHDL is the first hardware descriptive language developed. It is strongly typed. Verilog is weakly typed and more C-like and it is simpler to learn. Now that we have told about uh, Verilog being weakly typed and VHDL being strongly typed, what do we mean by it? Verilog, as I said, is weakly typed. In Verilog, a bit is a bit. Let us see this, a snippet of code written in Verilog to understand it more clearly. Here, in this code snippet, a vector register my bus is declared which is 32 bits. You can assign to it anything that codes as 32 bits. Signed integer, an unsigned integer or even 4 ASCII characters. Whatever you assign to it will be simply placed into the 32 bits. And it is it will be henceforth considered as unsigned 32 bit quantity as registers in Verilog are by default unsigned. However, VHDL being more strongly typed does not allow such simple way of writing the code. It has a variety of data types such as standard logic vector, signed, unsigned and so on, most of them contained in packages. You cannot simply assign objects of one type to another type, even if they have the same number of bits. You will need to use explicit typecasting operations. This will eventually make your code in VHDL more lengthier. Most designs in industry are mixed designs with legacy codes written in VHDL and some portions of the code written in Verilog. Simulators provide support for mixed HDL designs. I also told about System Verilog being an HDL. System Verilog is a superset of Verilog and it is a hardware descriptive language as well as hardware verification language. Like Verilog, it supports module level coding and it also supports class level coding or object oriented coding. Object-oriented aspect in System Verilog is mostly used to write test benches. 
Hence, system Verilog is highly used for verification. System Verilog for design is almost same as Verilog. So, in this tutorial series, we shall use Verilog for design as it is simpler to learn and it can be used easily for all the design of the circuits that we will learn in this series. Now that we have the HDL code ready, it must then be converted into gate level implementation and mapped to target technology library which are provided by fabrication units which consists of information about characteristics of the standard logic cells. Converting HDL to gate level implementation is called synthesis. You must have heard about creating a netlist of Verilog code. Here, netlist is simply a list of electrical connections that describe your circuit. As you can see, this is a netlist of CMOS NAND gate. It specifies the process technology, node, and also connections of the transistors, the MOSFETs within your NAND gate. You can see the MOSFETs M1, M2, M3, M4, M4 and their connections in the order of drain terminal, gate terminal, source terminal and the body terminal. So here your netlist is simply giving the connections for all your MOSFETs and also the technology library for your MOSFET. This netlist is later used to generate the layout for your PCB. Then the transistors from the netlist are placed and routed appropriately to get the resultant PCB layout. Note that a lot of verification is involved throughout this process. I eliminated showing them in the basic representation to make them simpler. By verification, I mean functional verification, which is verifying that the design meets the functional specification or the intent of your design and timing verification to ensure that it meets clocking or the speed requirements of the design. Now that we have seen the steps in digital system design, in this series, the approach towards every circuit shall be the same. We will first understand the question at hand, start with designing its block diagram, followed by its Verilog code. For all the topics listed in the introductory slide, you will learn how to code the circuit using Verilog and also see synthesis outputs of a few circuits. You will find answers to most frequently asked interview questions regarding those topics. As I mentioned earlier, we will be using Verilog for design and open source online EDA playground platform for simulation. If you are un unfamiliar with EDA playground, I have recorded a small video to give a brief idea on using the tool. You can watch that. Let's start with the design from next video. I will try to keep the content interesting, informative and helpful for placements in VLSI front-end roles. Do like, share and subscribe to the channel and follow this series. Also give your feedback regarding any other topic you wish to learn as a part of the series in the comment section below. Thank you.